אוקיי, okay, אז בוקר טוב לכולם. אנחנו ממשיכים בסדרת המפגשים שלנו, של מיטל, נצנוץ טכנולוגי. היום אנחנו נעסוק בכלי בריס, כי אלנה כאן איתנו, תציג לנו את הכלי. זה בעצם תוסף לכרום, ואיך אתם יכולים להשתמש בו לצורכי הוראה. כמו שאמרתי, בעצם זה המשך של סדרת מפגשים שעוסקים בהטמעה של כלים טכנולוגיים בהוראה. היום אנחנו מציגים את בריס, כי יש לנו גם שבוע הבא, וגם בחודש פברואר אנחנו הצגנו מגוון של כלים, אתם יכולים לראות אותם באתר שלנו, וכמובן להירשם לאירועים נוספים. אלי, כמה מילים? <אח> אלי מנהל מיטל. שלום, בוקר טוב לכולם, אז בעיקר להגיד בוקר טוב. סדנה מוצלחת ותודה לאלנה שהתגייסה בהתראה כזו לשתף איתנו פעולה בסדנה הזאת. אנחנו, כפי שעדי הציגה, אנחנו מנסים דרך הסדנאות וסדרת המפגשים האלו כל יום שני לקדם את הנושאים של סל הטכנולוגיות ואת הכלים שנמצאים בסל, לחשוף יותר ויותר טכנופדגוגים, טכנולוגים ומרצים לכלים האלו. ואנחנו נשמח אם גם תכירו את הסל העומק, גם תמליצו על דברים וגם ת, ת, תגידו לנו מה, מה נכון יותר ומה מדויק יותר לשימוש במוסדות. אני מזכיר שהוצאנו קול קורא לכנס מיטל לפני שבוע וחצי, כל מי שיש לו איזושהי חדשנות טכנולוגית, שימוש, case study מוצלח במוסדות או מחקר, מוזמנים להגיש לכנס, הכנס הוא מתקיים ביולי Uh, והוא כנס uh, עם לא מעט משתתפים אז אתם מוזמנים גם להשתתף וכמובן שאנחנו לעקוב אחריהם כפי שהיא אמרה uh, בפעילויות שלנו אז שיהיה בוקר מוצלח ותודה לאלנה ועדי על ארגון היום הזה בוקר טוב תודה אלי, אלנה הבמה שלך אוקיי, אז good morning everyone I will jump right into a demonstration. So if you want me to switch to Hebrew, I can also try and do it in Hebrew. I usually uh, do these workshops in, uh, in English. So the Chrome extension that I'm going to show you today is called Brisk. So what I'm asking you to do before I share my screen, just Google the word Brisk teaching, find it, and you will see what I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, if I understand correctly, uh, we uh, at DRI, we planned that I will demonstrate a few things for the first half an hour, and then we will re leave some time for questions and also practical uh, mm -hmm. trial and error from the participants. So you have some time to experiment with the tool. So I hope you already found the, the, the tool uh, on, uh, on Google. Please share the, the link to the tool in the chat, uh, those who found it, okay? And I will share my screen and show um what i want us to to do today so i'm gonna uh, go to google just to begin from scratch and this is my screen okay so uh i'm gonna search for brisk on google okay so brisk teaching the first thing that comes out is this um this is a chrome extension and it's very easy. I'm going to show you just from, from the beginning. Imagine this is my uh, my Gmail. I have no Chrome extension. So I'm adding it right now in front of you to show how easy that is. I'm going to click on Add to Chrome and Add Extension. Now it's going to be added to my uh, list of extensions. And the next uh, step that is important is now to sign um, in with my Google with my Gmail, okay? So I'm gonna hit on sign in and I'm gonna sign in. Okay, now uh, I'm connected to Brisk and Brisk connected to my Gmail. You know what? I'm gonna skip this whole uh, introduction and explanation of who I am. You can also skip that, just uh, saving time, click next. Now, um, this little demonstration actually shows you what you need to do and i will also do it with you so basically you need to make sure that you click on this uh, puzzle icon of the your extensions icon and make sure that you uh pin the brisk extension so that it appears on your toolbar right can you see that in the in the corner of my screen if anyone loses me for, for a moment, just let me know. I can stop and I can go back and uh, and force and mute yourself if um, really I can uh, uh, repeat whatever you, you whatever steps that you miss. Okay, so this is now uh, on uh, on my Google. 
And uh, I'm going to skip the rest of the introduction because basically all we needed uh, is add this and it's already there. Uh, now, this demonstration shows you that now when you are browsing on the internet, the, uh, the Brisk extension is not going to only be there on top. It's also going to be appearing on your screen. And it's actually fluid. You can put it anywhere on your screen that you like. You will see it in a moment. Uh, so uh, you will have access to Brisk from two places, from top and from somewhere on your screen. Usually, it's, it's the bottom corner right corner but you can also move it up and down and sometimes you have several extensions so they start accumulating on your screen and this might happen to brisk too so um let's uh, move on to the next step um this is something i will demonstrate in a second so basically uh let's begin with the actual uh, exploration of the tool i'm going to close this so i don't need to show you uh, this demonstration i'll just go to google and i will google the topic that uh, I need to teach or the topic that I need to uh, research. So I don't know, I, I guess that um, probably the majority, most of you are from higher education. I'm also a lecturer in the higher education. I teach uh, EMI courses. Uh, this could be disciplinary courses that I teach in English or uh, I teach English for academic purposes for international communication. I also do teacher training uh, in several colleges as like training teachers to become teachers and uh, uh, all kinds of professional development things. So sometimes I need uh, to find articles, materials for my students. Now, being an English teacher, for me, this tool is, is uh, absolutely amazing, but also for uh, other disciplines, you could find it uh, interesting because if you do, it works with research, it works with any text in any language. Actually, you can work with Hebrew. Uh, with Brisk. So I'm going to just uh, Google some kind of uh, topic that I need, probably something I'm from vocabulary acquisition. So I'm going to Google vocabulary knowledge versus use. You know that sometimes people know more words than they use. <laughs> and uh, this probably is one of the uh, important issues when we and you know what I'm thinking now, maybe I should Google it in Google Scholar just to show you that you can actually find academic sources. Let me do that. I'm gonna go to Google Scholar and Google the same thing. So uh, some articles, let's find some academic uh, sources, some academic articles on the topic of vocabulary uh, use as opposed to vocabulary knowledge. I'm gonna enlarge my screen a little bit. Okay. So let's see, um, I'm going to hit the first article that I get here. I think I, I'm familiar with this research. It's it's OK. And let, look what happens to uh, our Brisk extension. It's right here. You see, I told you it's going to appear somewhere in the corner. So once text appears on the screen, text that Brisk can read and interact with, uh, the extension will show up. If there is uh, no text on the screen, you will not see Brisk. So I don't have to highlight anything. I assume that Brisk has access to all of this article. And let's see that we actually uh, read full text. Can we read full text? Or is it uh, not full? Uh, not, um, hmm, I just opened this uh, full access. Now it shows me that I need to, let's see if I have another article like this with, uh, and I will just, maybe I'll just open it in another window where I don't have to let's see this one. Is full access. This is a book, sorry. Um, I want to show you like how it works with the full text when the text is on the screen when you have an account. So let's see if this will uh, give me the access to the text. No, okay, this uh, is asking to pay. You can access any of these resources from your institution account for sure and it will work. So this is probably what happened to me here. I accessed the same article from my institution account perhaps because I can see that I, can, I have access to the full thing you see. The, the article is here and Brisk is here. So I'm just in another window. So let me just remove this because it's too many tabs. Now we are just in, in the article that I found on Google Scholar. It's a different article. <laughs> Never mind, just an article, random article. The topic here is uh, 
how what will determine students' success uh, when they take courses in English, right, as a medium of instruction. And we're talking about disciplinary courses. What if they take, I don't know, in uh, mathematics and study this in English, right? How do we know the students can succeed? This is, I guess, the topic of the article, 2023. So what can BRISC do with this information? And this is where it comes really amazing. First of all, you can change level. And without reading the whole thing, you can just hit on change level and choose the level of English. Now it shows you 12 grade levels, levels from like, you know, for native speakers. So you could potentially take the information from this article and make it accessible to, near, to native uh, speakers uh, in the first grade, right? First graders uh, English which means that the language of the output is going to be extremely simplistic, right? It will extract information that is suitable to, to kids, age, age appropriate, but also to the level of the language. So if I want this article to be simplified for me, for like academic, uh, I would go for a higher grade, 10th, 11th, 12th. I don't mind if it's even 10th grade, right? Imagine a 15-year-old uh, a native speaker of English, their English is, is 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 enough for me. Like it's it's high enough for me to to get this uh, simplified academic uh, uh, article. And I want the summary. So uh, the best thing about Brisk is that it works directly with your Google Drive. So when you click on Change Reading Level, that's what I'm doing now. Uh, it will create a Google document for me, and it takes the article. It provides the uh, reference to the original article and it summarizes the content appropriate to the to the level. So if uh, anyone here is, you see it, it, it stopped for some reason here, I don't know why, but I can also hit on make it longer and I can ask for a more detailed summary. It will begin from the beginning. Look what happens when I take, hit uh, make longer. It actually extracts the the, um, the titles and subtitles of uh, of the article, and it's amazing because it actually now provides the introduction to what is EMI. And sometimes participants in my professional development webinars uh, and workshops are asking this question, so I can actually use this information, use this language when I talk about these things. Predicting success in EMI classes. And uh, it broke down, like it took the whatever, 12, 20 uh, page article and, and cut it down to this, right? So um, again, I, th I think this is the most amazing tool for actually English teachers. If you teach English and if you're looking for content, you can take any article online, any website, uh, blog, whatever, and create different texts around this, right? Create different material around this. I also actually showed this tool to my students who uh, either you know learn English or they take a course, a disciplinary course, I don't know, in soft skills, and they need to present something. And they, for example, have the slides and they don't know exactly what to say about each slide. So Risk can help with that too. It can take your slides and actually provide, produce a text describing the slides. So I can I can demonstrate that. Uh, so the first use case is just changing the level of the, uh, of the text. And it works with either websites or articles that are, you have full access to. You can also highlight information and work with particular part of the article. So let's go, uh, for example, to, um, I think this is like a picture. That's why it's very, very small. This article is not complete. So I'm gonna take another one about knowledge. And um, is this the knowledge? No, one second, this one. Okay, so this one is longer and actually has more text, yeah? Right, vocabulary knowledge, vocabulary. So I have access to whole, the whole thing. And let me show you what Brisk can do with this. So for example, now I don't want to rewrite the text. I want to create a quiz about this article. So what I showed you in the previous uh, demonstration is how you can create a new text in a Google Doc that drops into your Google Drive immediately. Now let's create a quiz on this article from Brisk. And I will ask for you know, high level uh, questions, uh, the highest possible in this particular app, multiple choice. Uh, let's say I want 15 questions and I want the questions to be in English. You can actually ask questions in Hebrew. 
if you teach uh, a course in Hebrew and if you use English articles and if you want to create, to generate a quiz uh, on a reading in, for your course, you can do a quiz in Hebrew. I'm going to do it in English just to make sure the results are uh, not funny. Uh, but, you know, go ahead and test it uh, with, with the language of your preference. So I'm going to hit, you see, it's I don't even have to write any prompts. It's so brilliant. It actually already has a prompt pre uh, like ready for us. Create a quiz about this web page. And this web page is an article that I found in the library. I actually found it on Google Scholar, not in the library. Uh, so I'm going to hit next. And now this is something that actually blew my mind. For those of you who use Moodle, maybe it's less exciting, but some institutions don't use Moodle. And I don't know how they create quizzes, but uh, in, 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 for example, in school settings, when I train teachers to teach, I don't know, in, in high school, I tell them you can use Google Forms for quizzes or exercises. So this tool actually creates Google Form, a quiz Google Form uh, for you in no time. So let's do it. Let's brisk it and, you see, uh, and you'll see how it works. It takes my Google Drive, it opens a new Google form and creates a quiz based on the article. It, isn't it genius? <laughs> like it saves so much time. And I asked for 15 questions and 15 questions are here. You could begin a lesson by, you know, testing your students and seeing what they understood and didn't understand from the article. It could be in Hebrew, as I said. Uh, now, you don't have to do anything because uh, when you're going into the question, they already marked the correct answer, okay? And it's going to get a point if they do it uh, right. You can even launch this as um, an anonymous quiz. It doesn't have to be assessment, right? It can be a learning progress or checking comprehension exercise in class. It doesn't have to be an exam or a test. It could be just you know, give them something to read and just give it to them and see what they answer without without even names, right? And seeing the results because you have the statistics of responses and you can immediately see what uh, answers you get. So the quiz is ready for you like that. Very, very easy. Um, and this is not it. It's just the beginning. So we have those quizzes. Um, you can then continue and ask for more questions, multiple choice or long responses, short responses. Brisk can generate, can extract keywords and generate word lists for you. And then you can ask for a quiz or an exercise with the vocabulary from the material that you teach. So this is pretty powerful, right? You have those um, uh, Google Forms integration. I think this is genius. Another idea that I had, and uh, it actually worked, you can ask Brisk again to create a, a quiz, but instead of asking it, uh, for a quiz about this web page, you can ask to create a survey. Uh, to conduct a similar research. I don't know if there is, I, I haven't, I don't, I haven't looked into the article, but the idea is that you can have Brisk actually write surveys for you. Like when you do research and when you need to collect data, you know, some researchers actually use Google Forms for data collection. So you can ask Brisk to create survey questions for you. Survey questions, let's put survey questions based on the article. In this case, since I'm changing the, the angle from uh, just asking students questions on their article, I'm now going to ask Risk to create survey questions uh, for me based on this article, based on this article. And I'm gonna see, well, survey questions can uh, also be, well, in, in survey questions, it could be multiple choice. I don't know if it's multiple choice. It should be probably short responses, right? Depending on your survey, but you could, generate some questions. This is again for research ideas, right? If you have an article and you want to do a similar replication study or whatever, you can ask for short responses, for example, 10 questions. Let's test this, test this live, okay? Let's go and you can actually uh, uh, create it in Google Doc. Let's do it with Google Doc because you don't have, you don't have to necessarily work with forms. You can create questions in a Google Doc as well. 
and then it will give you the answer key and everything. You can then copy paste the questions. Um, Okay, so it generated some questions. Uh, let's see, uh, let's uh, make it more difficult or less difficult or longer or shorter or translate into Hebrew or Spanish or uh, I don't know, French. We can add more questions and we can ask for an answer key. Let's ask for an answer key first. <laughs> add on an answer key for this quiz above next. Risk it. It's gonna continue the same document with the answer key if, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think this time it created a multiple choice question with the answer key. Okay. So it um it's not exactly what I envisioned because I asked for some survey questions, but, but again, maybe the article is not appropriate. So uh for like conducting surveys and, and future research. Let's make it more difficult. Okay, and then it's supposed to produce some questions that are more difficult, okay? Uh, I personally uh, am very excited about this uh, Google extension. It works really, really nicely and uh, it does a great job. I mean, for me, an English teacher and uh, whatever other uh, disciplines I I teach, it, it it is very interesting. So let's explore some other things. So I showed you how it works with... Um, simplifying or rewriting information from the internet. Uh, it actually also extracts, it knows to, uh, how to extract the, the images. So if you just go to a regular website, let's go back to this account. And um, instead of vocabulary knowledge, knowledge versus use, and maybe we, we are here and not in, not in the Google Scholar, right? What about uh, exploring not a Google Scholar, but just a regular article like this somewhere online? Okay, so we have a, an article online. And I want to show you that um, sometimes Brisk knows how to, let's see, let's download free trial. I don't know why this end. Okay, so for some reason, I don't see Brisk on my screen. So what happens if you don't see Brisk on your screen? You can highlight text and it's supposed to show up somewhere. Um, I don't know, let's see, am I connected? Yeah, now it's here. So this is, you know, all kinds of troubleshooting because you will probably face say, uh, similar uh, issues. Sometimes it's just not on your screen for some reason, but the solution is to highlight the part of the text that you want to work with or you know all of it like select all or something like that more reading so let's stop here uh, click on it and i'll show you some other things that you could do with uh brisk for example you can create a resource you can create an exemplar exemplar is a nice way to uh, create some sample you know um material that you want your students to rely on when you ask for something you want them to to look at the perfect example of something. So Brisk can generate that for you. Uh, lesson plans, decodable text, something else. You can just go and explore uh, your uh, own ideas. I want to show you something really, really exciting that just showed up a few days ago, literally. This is now integrated with Google Slides. And imagine I have this text and I want to present it. I want to present it in class or I want my students to create a presentation and create an outline. So now with the presentation integration, they click on presentation and it's free. It's in free version. It, you don't have to have any paid account here. Uh, you can create a, a free account uh, slides without images. So they will have to add their own images from, from Google Slides or PowerPoint. You can choose a template. There are several templates, not so many for, for now, but doable. <laughs> and I want a presentation in, in English. Or you know what, for, for those of you who don't teach in English, let's create a presentation in Hebrew on an article in English. And we can ask for up to 20 slides, okay? Which is a lot. <laughs> let's stick to, I don't know, 10 slides and brisk it. I'm gonna allow uh, brisk to have access to my Google Slides. For some reason, it, it, it didn't understand that I was already connected. So now, uh, Google Slides magic. So 
supposed to work. I don't know if the Hebrew is, is good enough because the AI and Hebrew are not the best friends yet. Uh, and particularly with, with brisk, I don't know. I see that the alignment like needs to be adjusted for Hebrew, but it does the job. I mean, it took an article on the internet it didn't create some slides for me. And I can need just to critically assess the information, of course, rewrite it. And uh, But I'm not starting from a blank screen from like no slides. I have already some slides and I can just go and change the template and whatever. What if I want some uh, keywords from this article? I can click on vocabulary list. Look, just pay attention to those popping up because once something is over, you will have a new prompt to uh, to generate either more slides or a quiz about these uh, slides. You can ask to, for a translation. You can ask for additional resource for a lesson or a vocabulary list. So let's create a vocabulary list with definitions based on the presentation above. Let's do it for, again, for the highest uh, level of English or uh, or any level of the, any language. Multiple choice, let's make it multiple choice, 10 questions. Next, and again, we can generate it with Google Form, which is pretty amazing. Let's do it, let's brisk it. I'm gonna create a Google. Um, so since it's another account, it actually asks me to connect because it's the first time I'm connecting brisk to my Google Slides, my Google Forms, my Google Docs, that's why. Let's continue. And uh, once you actually, uh, let's see, I don't know why it's trying to introduce Brisk again, because it's a new account. But once you actually give it um, your name and, um, not your name, sorry, your, your context, and you explain which subject, which area you come from, which kind of students you work with, it's supposed to give you better results, more customizable. Uh, okay, let's see. So it created, I don't know if it's, yeah, it, it it actually created a quiz about vocabulary. Look, it extracted some words. What is the definition of vocabulary? Uh, what is the definition of lexical collocations? What is the meaning of depth of vocabulary as opposed to the breadth of vocabulary? So it actually extracted some key terminology from the article. What is the definition of, of implicit learning and then explicit learning? an internal linguistic system and link language proficiency and context and connotation. Beautiful. You know, thinking about my students, I would love that for them to know the answers to all of these questions. So why why not? It's, it's a quiz. It took me two, uh, what, two seconds to create. So uh, do you have any questions so far? Because I have some other wow things to, to present. <laughs> So I've shown you how to work with text and uh, extract or uh, make them easier for you. Rewrite the text, the articles with Google Doc, and then you can generate Google form quizzes, exercises with this, and maybe surveys for research. I tried it with another article. It actually produced a nice survey. And um, there is also integration with Google Slides. So you can actually generate slides based on the text online. There is another cool feature I'm going to show you in, one, in a minute, but I want to ask if there are any questions. Uh, oh. There are some questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so uh, how can I use PDF files? So, so PDF files, uh, there is no, since it's a, Google, it's a Google Chrome extension, right? In order to have access to your uh, PDF, you would need to literally select the text copy and paste in the document and upload it to your Google Drive. Once you have your, uh, your Google Drive, which is not PDF, like readable uh, text, then it can interact with this. But you know there are other, even maybe better tools for uh, working with PDF files if you want to work with PDF files directly. So Brisk is not created for PDF files, but if you can maybe find the same article that you have in PDF in an open access through the library, right? Uh, log in through your institution and, and you can find it in open access. Like I found uh, an article here with, a, I don't know, modeling something and it worked. Uh, then yes, uh, di directly it doesn't work with PDF files. Uh, it, it, it works with, uh, with uh, many different languages. I see there is a question about languages. So, uh, can you send me a, I, um, 
Yeah. Uh, if you send me a link to something that interests you specifically in in another language, I can tell. I can test. But that's I, I guess the uh, the meaning of this meeting. So once you have it, uh, in, try to to test it with different things. I guess it's. I don't know for one hundred percent how well it works with other languages. I know that it translates, so it's supposed to work with uh, with the language of your choice. The quality, I don't know. With the English, it works very well. Okay. And can Brisk suggest right answers to open-ended questions? Good question. And I, I think we can test this. We can ask for, uh, let's see, we have this, uh, for example, presentation. We can go and uh, create a quiz about this presentation. It keeps uh, logging me in, so that's why all these uh, messages, sign in, sign in, continue. Uh, it's still not getting that I'm signed in, in. so one moment, continue. Okay, I get it, uh, I guess, and now finally, now it wants me to go through this, um, in, like kind of filling in the information, and I, I'm trying to skip it because I'm saving time, but then it keeps kicks me out. So. Uh, I'll go back to another account here and I will create a quiz here. So create um, a quiz and you can create a, instead of multiple choice short answers and then ask for an answer key, I guess. Let's see. Let's test this. But I, I actually want to show you another um, another application of this tool. Not only it works really well with documents, like online text. So this is uh, answer, answer, answer. Let's see if we, it can generate the key as well. Let's hit answer key. Add on an answer key to the quiz above. And next, let's see if it will do that. Brisk it. The, the prompt sounds right because this is what we want. We just want to uh, add on the answer key. It didn't get it. It rewrote the, okay, it, it did. It, it actually rewrote the- When you ask for answer key, it goes automatically to multiple choice. Yeah, but then you, then you can change it. So I also meant, I, I, I noticed that. I changed to short answers and now it actually gave me a quiz. You see, it actually rewrote the quiz again with the same questions, I guess, with the place for students to answer, but also there is an answer key to that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so it works. Now, one more thing, one more beautiful and interesting application of Brisk is that it works with YouTube. It works with YouTube videos. So let's test it with YouTube. Once you are in a YouTube uh, video of your choice, so um, I found a YouTube about uh, benefits of EMI. <laughs> I'm looking for benefits of EMI, trying to persuade uh, teachers who, who uh, now trying to teach in English that it's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, Brisk here also works with uh, videos. And uh, you see now when, when we are on YouTube, it will be highlighted in, in red, like the branding of YouTube. So again, apologies for the amount of the tabs that you see. It's just I like multitasking, working in so many different now. It's, it's clean and nice. So again, this brisk uh, is floating all over your screen. And let's make sure that the video has transcript. Yes, yeah, so some YouTube videos, the minority these days still don't have uh, transcribed. It's, they're not transcribed. So for some reason, uh, AI doesn't have access to the transcript of, of the video. But I think the majority now are transcribed. Even if you don't do anything, it automatically transcribes, right? So YouTube already did all the decoding. And um, this is just a random video that I found. And you can actually do all of the same things that you did with the text. You can do with the video. So you can change level. You can extract the information from the video in the format of a Google Doc. And uh, let's do it. So. It will extract the video information in the form of a text. That's the first application. Takes time. 
big picture <laughs> YouTube. Okay, music, welcome to our video lecture. Okay, that's not uh, exactly what I wanted, but it actually maybe extracted the, uh, you know, you need to go over it, but it's it's a good thing if you can't uh, watch the video for some reason. What else can we do? It's uh, loading data. Let's see. What if I want to create a quiz on this video? It can do that too. So let's go to maybe make it easier. It's great. Uh, multiple choice questions in English or in Hebrew. <laughs> let's test this again and let's uh, make it in Google form. So let's see. It's now supposed to take the video in English and extract uh, you know, the content and create automatically generate Google form exercise quiz with multiple choice and all correct answers marked as being correct. Let's see. Wow, I love this. How does how is EMI different from clean? It, it, these are all relevant questions. Probably you guys don't know the answers to as well. Wow, wow, wow. According to the video, what type of content is often written, written in English? Science, mathematics, history, physical education. Who knows? We need to watch the video to answer that question, right? These are excellent uh, questions for listening comprehension. If we talk about English teaching, where students need to listen to uh, to a video or to a podcast and answer the questions. Isn't it amazing? I think it's wow. Okay, and one last thing, you can even generate Google Slides. You can generate a presentation based on a YouTube video. How cool is that? Okay, let's do this. Uh, we want to generate some slides, uh, higher level English uh, without the images because we are on a free, a trial and not, it's not a trial it's just free forever account for educators it's free and make it let's make a dark template this time brisket i hope you already have installed it on your chrome and uh, you're ready for your own exploration because once you start playing around with the tool you will see how many things you can do now Wow, nice. This could be the you know the beginning, the starting point for my my next professional development training slides. You see that all explains what EMI stands for and why this is beneficial. And it's all research proven because the video, I mean the source of the video is of higher university and I uh, it's a very uh, successful, very high quality course. and you can find you know YouTube videos from from big universities around the world, right? That uh, have the relevant content to what you teach. So definitely go for YouTube sources that you can trust. Understanding EMI, English as a medium of instruction, introduction, EMI versus other instructional models, goals of EMI programs. And you see, I didn't read anything. I didn't even watch your YouTube video and I have all this information. And since I have enough background and expertise, I can just read the slides and decide, yeah, I want to talk about this and I know this is correct and this is good. EMI teaching strategies, EMI in science and research, conclusions. Uh, I'm really, really impressed with how risk extension works. And that's why I really wanted to share this with you. And um, there are other things that I can talk and talk because I uh, I believe that this is so beneficial not only to us teachers, even though it's called brisk teaching. I actually literally have to show, I, 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 I shared with my students uh, because students particularly struggle with English and they also need to create content in English. They need to present presentations in English and they need help with generating quality slides and also generating notes for their slides. So RISC is amazing in how it can take complex information and rewrite it at a very like accessible level so that uh, students with uh, uh, lower level English can actually deliver the content in, in their presentation uh, scenario. Right, we can go on and create a quiz about it. It's like you can go on and on and on and on and on and work with the, create more resources. You can ask for more slides. Let's ask for more slides. Create more slides for this presentation on the same topic. Uh, I don't know why it uh, asks me for multiple choice. This is strange. Create more slides, right? Sixth grade, I don't know. 
let's keep it higher level. Next. Uh, no, it didn't. So this is a glitch, right? There was create more slides, but then it wanted to create some questions. So not it doesn't work 100% smoothly, but from my experience, it actually uh, has been really, really good. Okay, so uh, do you have any other questions or ideas or suggestions? Because I can, there is no daily limit that I know of. Uh, what about copyright? When I create a presentation based on someone else's article, I can risk a lot about copyright issue. Um, so this is where, I mean, it depends on the use case. So I've personally used AI generated presentations for language practice purposes. So we just needed some information on the slides and we just needed some language for students to, to say. So basically I, I didn't have to go deep into ethics and plagiarism and citations because this would normally be my practice, oral practice uh, uh, exercise so that, you know, the slides are immediately ready for you and you also know what to say because Brisk has produced the, the notes for you. But you're absolutely right that when you take this uh, tool maybe to a higher level, up to a higher academic level for real presentations, research, uh, even students, like uh, seminar papers and work, of course you need to credit everything you write, every sentence that you that it, there is on your slide, you need to um, explain where it came from and who supports this, uh, what kind of research. So. For that, we also have AI, and I think Ellie has shown us a plan for a future sessions. There is another tool called Perplexity and size, size uh, Space, and there is, um, what is it, Consensus. There are the three, and Elicit, four, four tools that just come top of my, uh, on top of my head that actually work with academic citations, and it can extract, can write information for you citing the academic source for each sentence. So there is AI for that. You will learn about it in the following Mondays, uh, I guess. But yeah, you can do that too, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at some other questions. Can you write the name of four other tools in the chat? Uh, yeah, I can do that, perplexity is the first one, Perplexity AI. We will have a, a session about it. And the other three would be Elicit. And Consensus, Consensus AI. I don't know if it's Consensus AI and Science-based search, you see AI search engine for research. And the, and the number four is called size space. It's also pretty brilliant because it can um, compare the articles. It extracts the information, so it's still in the old uh, website. But the name of the tool is size space. So you just write the topic or write your research question, and it extracts uh, information from articles, from database of articles, from PDFs, from everything, and, and compares the, does the literature review for you. Okay, but we're <laughs> digressing from the topic. Okay. Um, wonderful. Okay. We have 15 minutes uh, for either additional questions or you practicing with the tool. And what do you think? What do you say? Your reactions? about uh, Brisk, would you try it? Do you think you could see yourself implementing it? I would, I would. Okay, thank you, thank you, very thank useful. You. Certainly we'll try it, yes, yes, it's totally worth trying at least. Maybe it's not 100% uh, there yet, it will be, improved uh like it's getting improved every day the presentation feature the google slides feature is very very recent it's very interesting that you can now integrate everything 
the I think the idea that you, you you get everything in your Google Drive for some people it could be a distraction and they will not like it. For me personally, it was a real interesting way AI can actually integrate into where I am already. Like I'm using Google Drive uh, slides and my students use Google Slides, so why not uh, have a tool for that? I am uh, using Google Docs, obviously all of us are perhaps, and this is very convenient that you don't have to copy and paste, right? Every time from ChatGPT or even from Magic School. So this is amazing. Mm, no, it doesn't connect to Facebook or other socials. It's literally just a little extension sitting on your Google Chrome. Ah, okay, I understand your question. Like analyzing posts. Yeah, Faina, I actually did that. I went into a, a, a Facebook group and there was a post there about, uh, you know, the AI and ethics and the use of AI tools in higher education. And, and, and of course, there are tons of opinions. So, uh, yes, if you highlight text, it doesn't matter if it's on social media, it can uh, extract the information. But then it depends what you want to do. Do you want to create a quiz <laughs> on the Facebook post? Or do you want to have this written in a, in a, in a different language, right? Uh, on a level of, the, of your choice, right? On the, for fifth graders, for 10th graders, whatever. Yeah, and then uh, comments as well. That's exactly what I wanted. So the, the, there was this thread of uh, like 300 comments. And sometimes I get lost because they are interesting comments and I want to have them. So... Brisk is not ideal for that because, um, I mean, what can you do with like what Brisk is not a research tool, right? It can extract information, rewrite the text for you. It can create slides for you and it can uh, create a questionnaire for you. So when I analyzed Facebook, a thread of comments, I actually just copied everything, put it in ChatGPT and asked ChatGPT to create a table uh, to summarize the comments uh, into like uh, pro and against like benefits and drawbacks, like all kinds of uh, comparison. And I asked, if, uh, it first actually rewrote it and said, okay, this person said this and this person said that. And I said, no, 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 I want actual quotes. And it created a beautiful uh, table with the quotes. So I can show that to you. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome what it turned out, but yeah. You can do it with Facebook API instead. Um, there was something I actually tried highlighting, and it said that uh, I, I now that I'm thinking, Brisk didn't work on Facebook. It uh, it told me that uh, Facebook protects the the text on their website. I cannot it cannot access it. So uh, the price for the pro version, I don't think we need the pro version because pro version works. Uh, I think it it's targeted towards districts like in the United States with schools. They're actually targeting to education, uh, like you know, institutions, not personal uh, teacher, like individual users. So, uh, as an institutional uh, pro account, which is not free, the additional features that you get, well, you might find them interesting. I don't know because they, I think they are currently the only way to detect plagiarism by it. I, I think we need another session for that because Brisk, uh, it, again, it's it's in paid version only. So I can show you what uh, it does. It's pretty amazing. It's also in the demonstration video. And I don't know the price. I have no idea. I've never purchased a, a pro version, but I know that it exists because all those you know Facebook discussions about plagiarism actually mentioned Brisk and that's how I learned about the tool myself. So, uh, in order to fight plagiarism, there is a way for you to generate progress reports. What, what means uh, progress reports uh, takes actually, which as you see, it's locked. Uh, it takes the students Google doc and it creates a video of how they, you know, it takes all the history logs from Google doc and creates a video of how they wrote uh, their essay, paper, you know, thesis, whatever. So basically, in order for this to work for you to track uh, like pledges, which I don't think any teacher has time for, and I, I, I don't believe in that, but <laughs> that's how people, uh, that's what people discuss on Facebook, educators, uh, higher education, uh, you know, professionals who are concerned with pledges. So this is their solution to go and use Brisk and, and uh, it creates a video that shows how students wrote 
literally like wrote, rewrote, what they delete, what they add. And then you can actually track some uh, chunks being added. So if, some, if they generate a piece, a paragraph with ChatGPT and insert it into Google Doc, it will show in the video, right? But then another person comments in the same thread and say, okay, there is another tool, <laughs> there is another software that can dictate to Google Doc uh, everything that ChatGPT wrote, and it looks like a student is typing, but they're not. So there is a way around, like there is a way of cheating for anything. So I don't believe in uh, this kind of police uh, policing uh, techniques, but it's an interesting uh, approach. So the rubrics, uh, the th these are the, the pro features that are locked for like paid version. I don't know if we need them. I don't believe in syllabus produced by AI. I can produce a much better syllabus with even chat GPT. I can ask for ideas. I can create some outlines. I can put things together. And you don't need a pro, a brisk to for syllabus, uh, honestly. But um, I don't know if you have, uh, if your institution wants to pay and check this out, go for it. I don't know, rubric. Practice uh, test. I don't know what it, state practice test. It's literally like targeted to uh, the United States because when you go into quiz generation, for example, and you want to generate questions, there are some standards. And I actually like them in, when I use the trial version. I don't think I have access to this. You see, it's like locked. But uh, there are different states, Alabama, whatever, Connecticut, Georgia, and they have uh, great standards for different um you know, for English, for science, for math, for, for language arts, and, and you can choose interesting standards to be, to guide your quizzes, to guard your question generation, which is pretty neat. But again, this is the paid version only. You can try it uh, in a trial because everyone gets a free 14 day trial when they sign up. Any other questions or comments? תודה רבה ילנה, תודה רבה מאוד. ההקלטה תופיע באתר מיטל, אנחנו גם נשלח לכם מייל מסכם, תראו אותה שם. תודה רבה לכולם, תודה שהשתתפתם, אני מקווה שהיה מעשיר ומעניין, ותיישמו את זה. המשך יום נעים, להתראות. תודה רבה.